Okay, so uh, we added our wall and our, our tabletop, um, and pretty much we need to finish this off by adding some colors. So let's go ahead and start adding color. Now, our goal is to uh, make the actual sculpture all one color. So that's going to be a complementary color to your background. The background, the tabletop, and the plane should be the opposite color. So in my case, I'm going to make my sculpture um, orange, or it could be blue, but I'm going to go ahead and make it orange. I'm going to go, sit, go ahead and select the um, abstract sculpt from my outliner uh, area here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And the way to add uh, uh, or assign uh, a, a color to this is by switching over from your modeling to your rendering uh, shelf area here. So again, right here, there's a little drop down menu from modeling to rendering. That will allow me to come up here to the main uh, application menu and select lighting and shading. And in this, I will choose assign new material. And uh, this pop-up window will appear. And you can see that I've got some favorites already there. Um, Maya surface, uh, volumetric. You don't want to use volumetric because these are really more effects uh, for your scene, but you want to use surface, and surface is what we want to add. There's quite a few here to choose from, um, but the one that I'd like you to use is the Blin, B L I N N, um, that one, and the Lambert, that's more of a matte material, and the Fong here, Fong. And Fong E, they add a little bit more of a specularity uh, type for it. So kind of stick to those. You can certainly try and use any of these other ones. Uh, but for, for this purpose and our demonstration purposes, I'm going to use Blend. Go ahead and get Blend there. And you can see now that I've got kind of a thing. And it doesn't pop up right away. Another way here, um, you can see that it does have kind of a specularity a little bit to it, is that I can go over to um, lighting and shading again and go to existing material and click on the blend one. Okay, here now you can navigate over to your blend material that I've applied to the actual sculpt, and um, you'll see here that oops go back over there go to existing oops it's not popping up there it was a minute ago but let's try this one there we go so if it doesn't show up for you what you can do is click on this little uh, box next to it now if i uh, click on color uh, you should be able to see this little pop-up. Now, you may have to uh, uh, allow your computer to actually um, uh, give you this option. So if you're not getting colors, you may need to go and look into your preferences. Um, if you're having issues with that, please email me and I'll, I'll t walk you through that. So here uh, we have our little color wheel over on the side. And I think I wanted to make this kind of an orange color. So I'll go ahead and just slide that over. You can see how it's changing the color there of that. And I can make that a little lighter. Now here there's other things too. You can add transparency, um, ambient color. There's a lot to choose from, but really just change the color to uh, one of your complementary color choices. I could bump this up just a little bit as far as transparency. Um, now the more uh, effects or uh, things that you do choose to um, add uh, will uh, significantly increase your render time. So you want to be careful about that. Maybe I'll come back there. All right, actually just right click on it you can um, 
go down to the very bottom here and assign new materials. So right clicking on any part of your scene here will open up that window for you. So again, right click, assign new materials, and that will bring you to a fast way to be able to assign those for you. So for this one, I will use uh, perhaps Fong. Okay, that adds a little bit more specularity for me. And what I can do here is I can say this is my wall um, color. And actually it's the tabletop as well, but we know that. So I'll click a blue color now for my complementary colors. And I kind of like that. So there it is. I'm going to grab my sculpt and I can make that a little bit larger. And I can also rotate that around to find a good spot for that. Now, I could click on my toruses, and if I wanted to increase the size of that, and maybe move that and rotate it as well. So I can kind of move that up a little bit, and maybe even move it out. Maybe make it hang out a little bit towards the side. I can rotate that around. Just kind of find a, a, a different approach to how I have that. There you go, something that's gonna add more shapes. I'm gonna grab the whole thing now and just kind of move that back a little bit to frame it. Now again, you can uh, expand or make your real estate a little bit larger by collapsing those menu items there. Now another thing I could do is make the base part of my sculpture, but I think it's okay like that. Now, if you accidentally nudge something out of the way, again, you could do uh, control Z uh, to make sure you bring it back. But go to your eyeliner, uh, outliner so that you can select the whole entire sculpture. And there we go. So I like that. Um, so in the next video, we'll start adding the lighting and uh, rendering this out.